name of this show is Living Wisdom. Today I have a very special guest by the name of Dale, Barad, uh, Dale Carley, and Dale is going to also be a conduit, so to speak, for another very special guest by the name of Barada. Um, first, I'd like to talk to Dale a bit about um, how you got involved in channeling Dale and what is your background, your spiritual background. Just kind of a brief description of that, please. Sure. Uh, for, the, for the first few years of, of my adult life, I, I would say that I really didn't have much of a spiritual life. Uh, I had an interest in spiritual things. I was searching for a spirituality. I tried many different avenues, but nothing really touched me, you know. Then I read a book by Shirley MacLaine, Out on a Limb, which kind of opened a door for me. And one of the things she talked about was channeled beings. And there was uh, one in particular named Kevin Ryerson yeah. who was uh, very impactful. And something touched me there. It, it was something more than the overall content of the book. Uh, it just it woke up something that was sleeping inside of me. And uh, I didn't do anything about it in particular, but uh, then, then I heard about Lazarus, which I don't know if your audience is aware, but Lazarus a channeled being who is very impactful uh, all around the world. Uh, I ended up getting a tape and listening to that and started doing spiritual work very actively and eventually went to some workshops. And, and then I met another wonderful channeler named Sean Randall, who channels a beautiful entity called Torah. And I had a private session with Torah, and that tied into the other spiritual work I was doing, going inside and reaching to find more of myself and what is my calling, how can I be of service here on the planet. And I heard that Sean Randall was teaching uh, channeling classes. She had just started at this point, which is in, I think, 86. And in 1987, I finally decided, OK, I really want to see if this is something for me. So I went and I took a class. And it didn't take long. I was very, very excited about it. I uh, ended up staying in those classes for about three years, working on it every day, doing the meditations, communicating with my personal spiritual guides, uh, and developing that rapport developing an ability to go into a trance state. And after uh, a few months, it, it became a part of my life uh, in a way that I would never have expected before, before, before I was a musician. You know, mm -hmm. musicians, they don't do that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Paralegals don't do that Paralegals kind of thing either, either, but yeah. hey. <laughs> but hey, here I was doing this, and it was real. And and there were things happening that I could not explain in other, any other way than, you know, this, is, right. this when, is communication. When did you actually connect with Barada? It was about two and a half years ago. Ah. I was at home, and I was channeling for my wife, Tysa. And she was doing some work with the fairy realm at that time. Uh, she's had some, some, par some uh, past lives. Mm -hmm where some things happened that had an impact on this life. And she was trying to find out what that was all about. And typically, I will be channeling people's spirit guides for them. And I've been doing that for now almost 14 years. And I was doing that with my wife. And then I, uh, all of a sudden, it l sounded like another being was going to come through. And then all of a sudden, this very dynamic being comes out and announces himself as being from the fairy realm and eventually said that his name was Bharata. And it was very exciting because none of us, ni neither my wife or myself, had ever heard of a, a, 
someone coming through and saying they were from the fairy realm. And I certainly had no experience myself with the fairy realm, and so it was, it was interesting and exciting and eye-opening all at once. Yes. Well, I've uh, had the experience of Barada, and he is truly a loving and wise being friend and has helped me personally uh, quite a bit in um, meditations that he has led as I was a member of a group. Yes. And um, so I think this is a perfect introduction for Barada I with your agreement why Dale will go into what we call an invitation, invocation, and while he does that, we're going to roll the credits, and then soon after the credits have been uh, completed, why we will have a visit from the wonderful being Barada from the fairy realm. hasn't quite come through yet, so we're going to sit here while Dale creates the space for Barada to blend his energy. And we'll know for sure when Barada comes through, because he is quite a dynamic being friend. This has got to be a television first to have a visitor from the fairy realm. All right, it's Barata. Hi, Barata, and welcome to my show. Thank you. Such a pleasure to be here with you. It I is a delight. I was just saying, this has got to be a television first, to have a wonderful visitor from the fairy realm. Oh. Well, we are delighted to be able to take part. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I'd like to, to have you give us some background information on the fairy realm, because for most human beings, the only thing we know about it is what we read in those fairy tales when we were kids, and we saw those cute little pixie figures. But I know there's much more to it. So please tell us about the fairy realm, about the beings who inhabit it, and anything else you'd care to share right now. All right. Thank you. Your Earth is occupied by more than human, animal, mineral, by more than plant. There is yet another realm of consciousness, and it is called fairy. It exists on this planet. It exists in the space that is called Earth. You do not see normally because it is a different vibration or what you might call a different dimension of time and space. There is a coexistence, however, within the same time, slightly different shifted space of this race called fairy. They similarly exist on this planet and are aware of animal, mineral, and plant on a day-to-day -day basis, but are not so aware, in many cases, of human. But shall we say more aware than many in your human realm? The fairy realm, as you have known it perhaps, relegated to the diminishment of fairy tales, is, shall we say, idealized, infantilized, and diminished 
even in the scope of the size of the beings. Actually, fairy beings can be quite large, can be six feet tall as you know it, and not necessarily with the little wings that you are accustomed to hearing about. Fairy beings are a kind of human being, a kind of human being that is, shall we say, more uni uniformly in touch with what it is to be physical in a broader spectrum. So therefore, the reality of a human may be more conformist in nature than you would perceive a fairy's reality to be. A fairy's reality will more directly express the uniqueness of that fairy being with respect to others in its realm. The fairy beings have a sense of communion with their earth which is more, shall we say, in their nature than perhaps many on the realm of human on your earth do experience. Due to the conformity and the sense of separation that is part of what is called chauvinism on your planet, there is less of a connection with the nature of the earth and with those beings within it and therefore there is more of a sense of struggle and alienation and a great deal of pain that happens on many levels on your planet as a result. But the fairy realm is very aware of the human realm and there have been many, many times where communication has occurred between those realms. One last note. The human realm and the fairy realm have a relationship. That relationship has gone through many stages. On one stage, those realms may have been quite intimately connected. They were. And at other times, less connected, due to many factors, one of which is the separation that is present in humanity that we have referred to, as well a parting of ways between the two realms on several occasions as a result of actions by human and fairy which caused rifts between the two realms. These rifts were caused by betrayals of confidence, by betrayals of trust, by human, by fairy, interrupting commerce, commerce of magic, commerce of knowledge, commerce of interaction. These rifts still stand. They occurred during the middle centuries of your modern world, shall we say, 500s through 15, 16, 17, 1800s even. These rifts occurred at various times. But now these rifts stand ready to be healed as you, human, and as fairy, do work to heal themselves and their planet. And so we have come to work with humankind to assist in mending those rifts to assist in reopening the gateways of communication on the many levels which they can occur. And we come to assist in any way which we can with humanity and individuals 
who may wish to communicate with us. How can human beings, uh, those who, who so choose, how can they open to receiving this kind of help and this communication? With the fairy realm. Yes, with yes. fairy realm. All right. The beginning is to allow yourself to be touched by nature. Nature has many gifts to offer you when you allow your heart to open to it. And when we speak of nature, we are speaking of loving consciousness that exists on many levels in your planet. That is, the earth consciousness itself. That is, the spirits, the consciousness of plants, of trees, even rocks, crystals. The spirits, the consciousness of nature itself, expressed through the various kinds of nature spirits that exist. Those nature spirits that correspond to the elementals, to the elements, to those forces in nature that are interwoven and are the basis of everything. The spirits of nature, such as the salamander, the fire energy, such as the undine, the water energy, such as the soup, the air energy, and such as the gnomes, the earth energy. These beings that are so interwoven and in interconnected with you, even in your physicality of your body, these beings are the first harbingers of your connection. As you open, you sense them first. And so allow yourself to sit with nature and to simply wait and invite and wait. Mm. It sounds like uh, for many people, perhaps just opening to the possibilities might be the first step here. Absolutely. Letting go of those beliefs that say, nah, this could never happen, this is just kid stuff or make-believe but to let go of those limiting beliefs, perhaps. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. First, in the area of beliefs, there may be something that prohibits you from allowing for the possibility of nature spirits at all, of consciousness in a rock, of consciousness in a tree. Dismantling beliefs is something that can be done consciously. Dismantling beliefs can be done consciously because they are conscious creations. They are something you adopt. <laughs> they are boundaries that you accept. Boundaries are very important in physical life. They are part of the game. It gets fun when you begin consciously choosing your boundaries. That has a very broad impact on your <laughs> life. And so, yes, working with beliefs, and then acknowledging for yourself that you have preconceived ideas about fairy beings, about fairy kings and queens, about little people with wings that go fluttering in and out, and have very little to do with taking care of your planet in a sense that is real. And so to acknowledge those beliefs being there, acknowledge those images being in your subconscious mind, you can then go working with beliefs, allowing yourself to shift them, and then going forward and allowing yourself to connect with nature, allowing yourself to open, and then going forward from that and experiencing, yes, experiencing what is there for you in your subconscious, because that is your filter. That was, is what will be between you and the fairy realm. 
that is what will come first the fairies the little fairies will come first allow them they will be projections of your consciousness absolutely but allow them because they must pass by you before you can get a sense of what is more real you'll go through the layers and more will come to you the more real will appear as you allow the others to pass by thank you um, early on you mentioned how chauvinism the rise of uh, male patriarchy which yes. got twisted into chauvinism and I know that that created this sense of needing to dominate yes. dominate everything and dominate nature for sure that perhaps caused one of those rifts that you mentioned yes. and it seems Barada that what you're talking about now the possibilities now are for us to be more in dominion with nature be part of that oneness yes yes there is this shall we say dichotomy between being in power in a chauvinistic sense which has been called domination and that is a very apt word because it involves having power over someone or something in a hierarchical structure so the result of this is inevitably that the one in power takes from the one that is being overpowered what arises is a chain reaction throughout your history of pain a chain reaction of loss a chain reaction of limitation for everyone becomes part of the food chain <laughs> On the other side of this dichotomy, if you move through and dismantle the chauvinism, dismantle the domination, the power over, the taking from, the pain, the diminution of spirit that results, and the limitation, then you discover a new kind of power that involves power with the self, co-creation with other consciousness that expands previous limitation, that creates miracles, and that creates a sense of dominion in physical reality, of knowing that power that comes from within and that comes from working with and knowing that loss, that limitation, that pain are no longer necessary as ways to grow, as ways to create. Perhaps the antidote, so to speak, to that pain and that loss and that domination that has prevailed for so long might be to develop um, more inner love, um, being a more loving person and, and being more open to receiving love, um, h how does that fit in with what you're talking about here? All right. The most tender part of a human consciousness or fairy consciousness is that loving self the one who is touched by beauty and the one who despite all self-denial is beautiful who is magnificent beyond all claims of an ego self of an arrogance that might be thrown up out of fear of inadequacy Beyond all of that is a genuine beauty, a genuine sense of beauty, and a genuine lovingness. 
with that is the desire to love and the desire to be loved. All of this in the most tender part of each human and each fairy. That part within humankind especially and even within fairy realm to a great degree has been protected by the fear of loss, by the lack of love, by the belief in undeservability of love that you are not deserving of love. I see that we have just about a minute more. All right. I know that we could sit here and go on and talk because this is such a vast subject. It it's is. It's such a beautiful subject. But I want to thank you so much, Barada, for your presence here today. And it's just been a joy and, and so beneficial to have you communicate. Um, in my book, I have a chapter on unseen friends and unseen realms. But I want to thank you so much. And I want to thank the audience for being with us today. So goodbye until the next time. <laughs>